Hi folks, welcome back. All right, we uh, just finished off uh, last time. We were, had just chopped out the waste, or at least we done as much of it as we could. So I'm going to put this in the vise and go ahead and clean these out. I'll give you a fast review while I'm doing it. I don't have a piece of backup piece on this time. I don't need it. That's fairly heavy, and I'm somewhat careful. Go in here and clean out as much of this as I can. Remember to just nibble away at it. Don't try to take big chunks. If you do, it'll come back and bite you. Remember, do not touch the perimeter. Depending on the wood, you could be a little more aggressive. But with this northern white pine, that really is not an option. So be so careful with this stuff. What I'm doing on the side is just, yeah, I want to expose the kerf. So when it comes into time to pair along there, I can easily see it. All this for you. Okay. Now <coughs> I'll actually come in here and trim this first before I pare down that uh, end lap. Oops. Push that too hard. After saying I wouldn't break it off. Okay. Chisel right in the scribe line. Pair straight down. And then I have a tendency to walk that line. I'll show you what I mean on this one. Make sure I'm sitting in there. Pair that down and then reference off of it and just move the chisel forward to get a little bit more. Instead of having to lift the chisel out entirely and then come back and try to locate that scribe line again. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Pair down. <clears throat> I'm going to put a backup piece in there just because I'm a little bit nervous about that piece. It seemed to move a little bit too much. Better safe than sorry. Okay, now we'll go in there. A little more pressure into those corners. Come in here, reference off of the kerf, and just pair right into the corner. It's always a two step process. You're coming from the bottom or along the side and then you've got to come up here on the top and just kind of work your way into that corner. You can't go all the way from either direction ignoring the other because if you do you'll blow something off. This is also where you want really good bevel ditch chisels, and by that I mean you want very narrow flat spots right here. You want your bevel to come almost right to the bottom. In other words, you're going to be bruising, beating things up. Okay, flip this around. You may want to switch and come to my other side. Right into that corner. And if when you're doing it, it just doesn't feel quite right, then go in with the uh, 
your dovetail chisel and make another cut. I want to make sure that the fibers are released at the bottom, severed at the bottom, so when I'm making these cuts, the uh, fibers come off and drop out of the way. One little precaution, I'm constantly doing this with my chisel to clean it up. You don't do that with this one. You know, cut yourself bad. So that's one habit that I had to uh, curtail when I started using that chisel. Okay, now we're going to come in and check. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but hear that? Yep. So we know there's a ridge there. So i got to get a hold of it. And then pair right across. Okay, it's gone now. Nothing there. I don't think there's anything there. Looks like a little bit right in the corner. See now on this side. Nothing on that one. Maybe a little something right there. Definitely some on this one. Make sure those corners are clean. Okay, take my marking gauge and make sure those backs, again, careful of the corners. Now, excuse me, let me, let me get in here. I want to make sure that there isn't any little bit of debris left in the corners and there is just a whisper right there. That one looks you know, there's a little bit there too. More often than not you'll find a little a little bit of material left right in there and that's enough to kick the joint apart. Spread it meaning it pulls back from the end lap when you're assembling. and ruins an otherwise perfect joint. Now I don't know if I showed you this last time or not, but what I would do, use my square. Okay, you want to get right over here, directly across. Set that in there, make sure you're pushing down at the bottom, and you just want to make sure that that's either standing plumb or slightly undercut this way. And I move it so that I'm checking this corner. That looks good. Coming right over and checking this corner as well. I don't want any sloping. If it slopes this way at all, then I know I'm in trouble and I've got to go in there and clean that out. Now, just to be as a precaution, I'm going to go in there and just make two light cuts. When I do this, I start. I start in about a thirty second or so from the top, so I'm not starting up here. I'm coming just inside and then making that cut. Make sure everything is clean. Okay. All right, now let's have a quick look at this. Nice clean corners. No ridges left on the sides of the pins. Cuts are plumb. It's flat down in here. That usually happens anyway because when you're chopping, what you'll notice is you're attempting to hold the chisel perpendicular like this, but it's always going to slightly undercut. So rarely do I ever have to go in and check like this to make sure that it's either perpendicular or slightly undercut. It's almost always going to be slightly undercut. Okay, next thing we'll do with this piece is cut our groove top and bottom. Okay, now set that aside. And I want to go in and cut this piece to final width. This is the uh, piece that the lid will slide over top of, so it's got to be a very specific width. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, are we back on Jake's camera? Yep. I'm going to use my marking gauge. You want to come in and close on this. I'm going to come in and use my marking gauge, referencing off of the side, and I'm going to come right up. the bottom of where that groove is going to be. 
locket. And then referencing off of the bottom, I'll come in here, score a line. I'm going to use the marking gauge. I'm going to use the uh, shooting board, so I'm not going to need to mark the inside because the shooting board is going to give it to me nice and square. But I think what I'll do is rip part of that off, the majority of it, and then come in and use the shooting board. So I'm going to swap out from my bench hook, use my tenon saw, make this cut, my bench lamp over. Okay, Frick, can you see? You might want to come over on this side. Actually, come right over my left shoulder if you would. This small parts you can do just about anything you want on the shooting board. This or on the bench hook. This is a little bit wide, and typically you're not doing a rip cut on this, but it's the easiest way to hold it. So what all I'm going to do is come in here. Do I need to make that line a little darker? Can you see it? Uh, you should. Yeah. Yeah. Let me grab a pencil. Like I showed you this the other day, and then what I'm going to do is just cut a chisel tip. And then, just so I can see it a little bit better, drag that chisel tip down through there. Okay, now I'm going to avoid, I'm going to, oh, I don't know, I'm 30 seconds of an inch away. Just walk right along that line until the curve gets started in the top. And I switch saws just because this has got a heavier tooth, so on a wide cut like this, the dovetail saw would be a little bit too slow. got that IBC blade and chip breaker that we went to work on about a year ago. Cuts beautifully. Converts an old Stanley plane like this into a working performance equivalent of something that would cost ten times as much. Okay. Watch that line. Back that off. Now, we can't see that very well. I'm glad I kept that setting. I'm going to do this on the other side just because I'm not able, because of that pencil line on there. I can't see it as precise as I'd like to be. I'd like to. I want these two serve these two edges to remain parallel, so I'm just being careful and sneaking up on it. Can you can you see that scribe line? You get a little more over my left shoulder. Okay, now I've got a little more here than I do up there, so I'm going to take almost a complete cut, but come off right at the end, and that's just going to orient that a little bit differently. So, okay, there's that little whisper, just about to let go. One more. All right, that should be good. Okay, now, let's make sure we've got this right, that's number four, that's number four. So we'll put this, actually I used a smaller plane, didn't I? Grab my block plane. Just because there's not much, this is not very long, and I don't want just barely grabbing an inch or two on the bottom in the vise. Set that so that it's flush with the top of the plane. Push this back. Check your numbers again. That's four and four. Now, 
Tail marking knife. Gotta line this one up perfectly. Um, let's grab my tail marker. That bottom lined up. Okay. Now I'm looking right down. I want to. I, I want to be this line has to be lined up with the inside surface of this board. And in order to do it accurately, I've got to look right down that line. So when I get the bottom in position, I'll then move over, look down, and make sure that that's properly lined up. And that looks... Double check. I actually think it's a little bit too forward. Okay, that looks good. Hold that firmly. Now, position my lamp. I always mark all of one side before I switch and do the other. Come in there. Remember, I don't want to come across that line, so I'm going to stop as close to it as I can. I press the knife tight against the side of the tail. Allow the blade to flex a little bit, and it's that flexing in the blade that keeps the tip of the blade from wandering in the end grain of the pin board, which often would happen. Okay, that may take just one more pass, bring it down to size. But before I move, make sure the lines are in place, and if for any reason they weren't, I'd be sitting there with a pen, and just if I had one of these was, that wasn't correct, I'd come back, back in, I would correct it, and I'd sit there with a pen, and the minute I left that off, I would put an arrow to the correct line so that when I come to cutting that, I'm not trying to guess which one it was. Okay, real quick, just like we did before, chamfer the inside edge. Make sure you're doing the inside. Step in, oh yeah, we can take the whole corner off of this one because it's half blind. Choke up on the chisel so you're not running the risk of jamming it into your hand. At least this way you get a lot of control. And then just clip those corners. I'm not going to take any off of there because it would be seen. Okay, set that one aside. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and cut this one. Turn that over, position the lamp just so, set my marking gauge on its side, dovetail marker I should say. Continue that line to the scribe line. You're going to find cutting these small dovetails as I said earlier, is much more difficult than cutting the ones that you would typically get in a, an average size drawer. Mark my waist. Okay, that looks good. Now I want that standing plumb. How's the time, Jake? Ten minutes. Okay, good. I should be able to get this one and the other one. At least mark them. Okay, position the lamp just right. Remember, you want to highlight that knife mark. It's so important to have a good lamp that will do that. You don't want to come in here and put a pencil mark in these. I need to. I need the precision of seeing that knife line. Now, what are you? I, I'd like you to be up a little bit higher. Yeah, the looking, in the way. Is it? Can you come over? Can you see these lines now? Uh, I think the lamp's a little too bright. All right. Oh, I got them. Yeah. Okay. So there's my knife line. Line the saw up. Always lateral pressure. And then use the finger and thumb to push the line, push the saw over. Starting on the inside. Cut to both lines. Move to the next one. afforded a little bit there when we clean up. OK, 
Okay, reposition the lamp. Here, let me gonna move this to a different hole. Oops, wrong side. Okay. This one I push a little bit harder. Okay, I don't know if you can see or not, but there's a little bit of material left. I didn't quite get the line, but on pine, that's okay. That will compress, not a problem. Maple on maple, we may have to go in there and pair that, but on this stuff, it'll be fine. I always concentrate on this top line. That's the one that gets seen. Okay, now, a little bit of concern here. The reason is that that line seems to be drifting. It, If you follow it, it comes straight, and then it wants to turn toward the left, which I suspect that's not the way it should be. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to purposely move a little bit to the right, and then follow the majority of the line, which in there an eighth of an inch straightens out. So let's hope my guess is correct. That is a little bit awkward. All right, let's crank these out. We've got the waste identified. Move the lamp out of your way. Okay, these are a little bit narrower, but I can still use this chisel. Get in there a third. Start heading toward the bottom. This is a little bit easier because it's the exact, or almost the exact width of the chisel, so I'm not having to move it side to side. Scribe line. This one for some reason is just a little bit wider, so let's force that down. Now, I wonder if this is going to be too small for my dovetail chisel. No, it's okay. However, I'm going to grab a little narrower chisel for doing the pairing. Stay away from the perimeter. Small, manageable cuts. Take less effort, allow you a lot more control. And that is the reason why I do it. How's our time? Five minutes less. Okay, we can get this done. Close the kerf. Now 
You'll notice that the uh, bevel angle on these chisels is a lot more acute than normal. And on this soft pine, I can get away with it. This one is at 17 degrees, probably an extra 3 or 4 degrees on the secondary and tertiary, but it sure slices through pine nicely. And this is just a little bit sharper, that's why I switched chisels. Now set it in the gauge line. Okay, now see right there? This is not why I'm not going to come in and there's, there's too much material right there. If I try to put the chisel right into here, it's going to drive it in that direction. So I won't try to get rid of that, clean that corner out until I remove some of this material by pairing horizontally along the face of that pin. That one I could make a little bigger cut because there was no material there. Okay. Now this is going to be a tight fit. I have had narrower dovetail chisels and I may have to make another one. I'm going to do much of this small work. Okay, i got to clean out some of that stuff on the side first. See if we can get this chisel in there. Right into those corners. Lamp just right. Come in, reference off of the side of the pin. Continue that curve right into the corner. May as well do this now. Check, and if there's any more there, get rid of it. Makes a lot more sense to do it now than to come back in and have to add a step. Plus I've already got the lamp there. Okay, that one's good. Now if you're wondering, that's part of the, the uh, that little bit of flaking right there is part of the marking gauge, uh, the mar dovetail marking knife. So I left that line a little bit, uh, that saw curve was a little bit in the a little too far in the waist and left a little bit too much material but as I said on pine like this it's not going to make a difference woods will uh, both woods will give enough to compensate for that all right we'll do this one get in here and undercut these fibers. I've never done it, but I would guess this is a little bit like surgery. Feels like it anyway. 
only difference is this stuff won't grow back. Okay, that looks to be clean. Now this last one. This is the one that had all the muck in the corner. Gotta get rid of that. Be real careful when you're trying to find that with the point of your chisel. Of course, your chisel wants to dig in. But if you got a light touch, One there. I thought the line was out of place. Okay, make sure these corners are clean. You notice when I do this, I pull, I don't pry, I just lift the chisel straight up and try to clear that out. Now, change that setting. We're out of time. Okay, let's just. Uh, Let's check that back wall real quick before I walk away in case I forget to do that when I come back. That looks good, that looks good, that looks good, but I always like to come in and just make a little paring cut just in case there is something a little proud. By the way, the only time you get into real trouble is if the grain on this pin board is running at an angle and you try to do that pairing from the top and it severely undercuts. In those circumstances sometimes you may have to go sideways or you just have to take very very small cuts and approach it real slow. Okay so that one looks good. That one last one to do and then we'll be able to cut the groove. We may actually get this assembled We'll get the lid down, but we'll get it assembled in the next session. Okay, well, that is episode number nine. So we're on to number ten. I'll see you back here in a few days.